Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Lisa and in this video we're going to have a look at how I've completed this Lynx from start to finish. In the description below I'll put a list of the paper, pencils and colours that I've used so you can check that out. And if you like this video remember to like and subscribe and if you'd like to see more of my work you can check me out on Etsy and add me on Instagram for all of my pictures in progress. So let's get started drawing the Lynx. So always with a portrait like this, I like to start with the eye. So I go in with a light pressure on the dark sepia and just get the shape that you want. And once you're happy with that, you can go in with a harder pressure and then also outline the pupil with the dark sepia. When it comes to realism and getting things to look realistic, it is really important to make sure that you have the right shapes and the right proportions and that. So it is really important to make sure that you get the shape and that's what will make it look more realistic. So then into the highlight in the eye, I always go in with a soft white Holbein pencil or I can even use the Prismacolor soft white pencil. And this will put down a wax resist, which will prevent any of the color getting into the white highlight so that it just stays nice and white and you get the reflections in the eye. Then it comes to putting in the color of the eye. I started with a layer of the warm gray one and started to add in some of the sky blue for the blue colors. I also put in a little bit of the dark Naples ochre, which is the yellow highlights in there. And then for the green color, I used the olive green yellowish but also using this very, very lightly. So if you go in there really dark, it will make it really green really quickly. With all of these layers, you wanna make sure that you're working them up really, really slowly, very light layers and blending them often. So after you have a few colors going in there, I also went in again with the Holbein Soft White Pencil or the Prismacolor White, really lightly over all of the colors to blend them together. This will make them look sort of smooshed together and very glassy like it looks in actual eyes. And then you can go back over with the same colors and start to build in the darker areas. Then when you're going around the highlight, you wanna go in with a harder pressure to make these really stand out and have a darker line around the highlights where we've put the white Holbein pencil. One of the good things about using the soft white Holbein pencil is if you do get too much pencil in there, you can just use a scalpel or a scrape tool and just pull away some of the color that's gone over the top because it has that waxy layer underneath. You can really get the highlights chipped out really clearly. So in the eyebrow of this one, there is a couple of really white um, whiskers coming out the top. So I used my embossing tool to put in a couple of really hard whisker lines so that they'll show out in the end. And then when it came to the ear, I used a base of the warm gray one and went in with the dark indigo, Payne's gray, sky blue, and started to work in some of the violet in the purple areas as well. And then over the top of that with the dark sepia with little um, burr lines, which will make it look darker where you need it to be. So when it comes to doing fur like this, I start to go in with a warm gray one and then you need to look at the colors that you can see underneath the fur. So in the ear on the left hand side, you can see there are a lot of blue tones. So I've used a sky blue where it's a pinky color. I've used a beige red and then in the darker sections, I've used the violet, which really helps to emphasize the orange tones in the fur. And once you have in the base colors and the colors underneath the fur, this is when you can go in with your fur lines with the walnut brown, burnt umber, dark sepia, caput mortem violet, dark indigo, Payne's gray, and start to build in all of those darker fur lines. So when you're putting in your fur lines, make sure to go in the direction that the fur is going and also against the fur direction. Because this fur is sort of really salt and peppery, black and white, um, you know, colored and white sections. You really want to depict the fact that there are white furs in between all of the reddy brown furs and the black and white furs. So you want to do your first strokes going against the fur. So this makes it look like that the white fur is overlapping the darker fur. So when it comes to an ear, I try to break it down into sections and just work on one section at a time. Because if you go in and just start shading over everything, it just takes forever to sort of render and 
can be very confusing at sort of where you're adding things. So I started with the basic outline and started to add in some of the colors. And then where the whiter furs are going into the darker section, I went in with my embossing tool and put in a heap of lines so that you can see the individual furs going into the darker section of the ear. Then you can start to work from the dark section into the lighter section. So you're pulling your fur strokes from the dark section into the lighter section and this will make it look like the darkness is underneath the white fur which is what you want. And then sort of towards the end you can start to add in some of your white Holbein pencil to put over the fur strokes which will make it look like the white hair is overlapping the darker section. This can be really tricky and it does take a long time to build up the different tones and get the darker and lighter areas in there. A good hint to do as well is to always invert your reference photo into black and white so you can see where the darker sections are and where the lighter sections are and getting the dark and light values will help it look more realistic. So putting in the second eye you really want to make sure that you're looking at your reference photo and just making sure that you're getting the darker and lighter values in the right place and your eyes are sort of matching in color which will make it look more realistic. So when it comes to doing the fur lines for this animal you need to make sure that you're looking at your reference photo and seeing where the shorter and longer strokes are because you don't want to go into sort of the ridge of the nose, the side of the face with really long fur strokes like I have on the end of the ear. Because they are really small in these sections you need to make sure you're depicting that with your pencils. And it does take a long time and a lot of layers. So the more sort of colors and layers that you're using, the more realistic and thick the fur will look. So if you just go in with a couple of layers of like the burnt sienna, burnt umber, walnut brown, dark sepia, it will look sort of thin and not look really rich like it does in the actual photo of the animal. So don't be overwhelmed when it comes to doing fur like this. You just need to build up the layers really lightly and which will make it look thicker in the long run. So the nose on this one is really small, but I did the same procedure as with the eye. So I went in and did the outline with the dark sepia and then went in with the base layer of the warm gray one and started to build in all of the tones I could see. So I used a lot of the beige red, sky blue, violet, burnt sienna, caput mortem violet, cinnamon, and also started to put in some of the olive green yellowish in the darker sections and some of the burnt umber, dark sepia, dark indigo. Then remember the same as the eye, to make it look nice and shiny, you can go in with the white Holbein pencil or the Prismacolor white pencil and blend it all down and then put in little dots of the waxy pencil will make it look like there are little bits of sunlight hitting the nose. You can also go in with a white gel pen if you want to have a real sharp sort of light section as well. Then for the whiskers I went in with my embossing tool and put in some long fur lines that you could see for the whiskers and then started to build up all the tones around that. So in the white fur I used a lot of the sky blue and ultramarine with the warm grey one and then also moved in with the warm grey three, the dark sepia and then sort of a little bit of caput mortem violet to add a bit of a reddish tone to it and the dark indigo Payne's grey are sort of really nice blue colours that will make your darker sections look nice and blue. So for bigger fur sections like this where it's sort of fur all the way down to the right hand side I sort of like to break it up into clumps and work on sections at a time just because it breaks it down a little bit and it isn't so overwhelming um, and seeing where all of the different shapes and textures are. So for the white fur I did go in with the warm grey one, the sky blue, the ultramarine and sort of blended that down with, I did use a luminance white pencil to blend this down but you can always use like a polychromous white pencil just to help to burnish and blend it all together and then you start to go from the darker sections into the lighter sections with your warm grey 5, dark sepia, Payne's grey, dark indigo to make it look like the whiter sections are overlapping the darker sections. Then you can go in with your whiter waxy pencil and put in some fur strokes over the top and then with all those layers it makes it look nice and thick and like the 
dark sections are underneath the white fur, which is what you want. And I did find by the end of this one that I had to go in and really evaluate all of the colors in the fur because I didn't go dark enough to start with. So where I've gone with the, on the forehead here, I added a lot more darker strokes with the dark indigo, Payne's grey, dark sepia, the walnut brown and the burnt sienna where the orange redder tones are. So when all of the colour was in I then left it for a night or I think I left this one a couple of days and then I came back and evaluated where it needs to be darker and lighter in different areas. So you can see I'm going through and just adding different sections in, going in adding mostly the Payne's grey, dark indigo, Caput Morton Violet, Walnut Brown, Dark Sepia, all of the darker pencils to add in all of the shadows. So making sure you're seeing where the lighter and darker sections are is where it will make it look more realistic. So on the left hand side, underneath his chin, there's a lot of shadow. So I needed that to be darker than say the right hand side, just underneath his chin as well. So this is the final result. I really hope that you liked this video. Please give it a like and subscribe for more videos to come in the future. And I hope you enjoyed this piece. Keep drawing guys. Thanks.